Let's look at an application of the uh, superposition principle that we just sort of determine when we have multiple types of loading on a beam. So let's consider a column base here. Uh, it's, it's got dimensions b by h, and it has some height that's unspecified here. And there is a force p being applied axially onto the system. And it's being applied axially off the centroidal location along some line uh, in, the, in the dimension uh, associated with h. And so the, the side view is shown over here. Uh, where I have this trapezoid and I have the force P and it's offset from the center location by some distance E here. And when I do this, on the bottom face of, of the column here, I, I'm going to have for equilibrium a moment P times E and an axial force P here. And so superposition tells me that I'm going to get stresses from the axial force P plus I'm going to get stresses from the bending moment here, PE. And if you look at the orientation of how the, the loads are going, that implies that on the right corner here I'm going to have compression, and on the left corner over here I could possibly have tension if the moment were large enough. And the question that I'd like to answer is how large can E be to ensure that I'll still have compression along the entire base? Okay, so if E gets too large, this moment is going to be too large, and that will cause tension over here. Okay, by superposition because the force acting on the system is going to give me compression uniformly across the base. So we can use superposition to answer this question. So if I first look at the stresses due to the axial force P, on the bottom of the base here I'm going to have P over A, where A is just B times H. And if I think about the bending moment, I'm going to get a bending stress which is minus MY over I. So I'm, I'm measuring y in this direction here. Okay? And what I'm worried about is what happens over here on the left side. So is the bending stress, the tensile part, larger than the compressive part due to P over A from the normal force? So the total stress by superposition then is going to, at that corner, the, the left corner, is going to be minus P over BH plus PE H over 2 divided by BH cubed over 12. So that gives me the, the stress at that point. And if I'd like it to be compressive, it has to be less than or equal to 0. So I can go ahead and solve this relationship here. And what I see is that E needs to be less than H over 6. So there's a, there's a geometric constraint on how large E can be to ensure that I have compression across the entire base here. Uh, if I make a plot of that looking straight down onto the top of the, the column here, I see that I have a distance h over 3 centered right in the middle of the column that allows me to apply the load. So if I apply the load anywhere in this region here, uh, which is h over 3 wide, then I'll still have compression in the beam. Okay. Now I can do the same calculation in the other direction, and I'll find out that I have to have a load over a region B over 3 going in the opposite direction. So, And in fact, if you try and move the load around anywhere on the top of the column there, there's a region here which is this little uh, parallelogram or diamond shape which we call the kern of the column. So if I apply the load anywhere inside the kern here, uh, I'll be able to ensure that the entire face of the base of the column is always going to be in compression. And that's, that's a useful thing if you're designing a foundation, say, to a building.